In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to apply the Bohemian Canvas textures to an image. We are going to start with a simple example and then I will demonstrate more complicated edits. We have here an image that I've already completed um, using pink ribbon from the Bohemian Canvas collection. And it's an image of a newborn and it's actually very, very simple to execute. This is the original image. I've already edited it, but I haven't done much editing. It was shot on a white background. Um, I've sharpened it and I've lightened it, and that is about it. I've also smoothed out some of the imperfections in the skin, but I haven't done much else to it. And this is the entire image here, so you can see its proportions. I will crop this image slightly after I'm finished um, overlaying the texture. But for now, this is the original image, and I have my pink ribbon over here. I grab my Move tool, and I just slide it across like this. And as you can see, I've been given bounding boxes, so you can use those. If you do not see those bounding boxes, um, which you use to adjust your texture, you can press Command-T and the transform dialog will come up. Now as soon as you find what you like, and you can do that by going to opacity and lowering it a little bit and seeing where the image is underneath, like that, you need to click or you need to press return to seal in your transformation. If you don't do that, it's a very simple little step, um, you actually will not be able to do much else. You have to, whenever you move these bounding boxes and change that size of the texture, hit return or enter so that you can seal in that, that change. Okay, now as you can see, um, I've got my image underneath here. And now I'm going to I'm going to bring this back up to 100% and I'm going to choose a blending mode. And the blending mode I want to use with this particular texture is multiply. And I'm going to bring it back down again in percentage just like this. And I want to demonstrate to you that these textures need stronger blending modes than overlay or soft light. If I were to use this on overlay, this is what would happen. If I were to use it on soft light, this is what would happen. You'd see almost no texture at all. Even at 93, let's put it at 100%. If I were to use this on hard light, you do see more of the texture. And in fact, these textures uh, respond very well to hard light or multiply. But in this case, I'm going to use multiply so that I really can see the texture. I'm going to bring it down a little bit like this. Okay. And that's about where I want to leave it at 46%. Now, as you can see, a texture, as I said before in the other tutorials, always imparts two qualities, texture and color. So I want to remove the texture from off of her little face, but I want to keep the basic coloring of this texture. Otherwise, I'm going to have a photo peering out of that of that image and it's not going to look like it belongs to the whole piece. So I want to keep this the same basic color, this nice pale pink of the texture. So I know that I want to use multiply and I know that I want to use it at opacity 46%, but in order to find out the color that I need to place upon this face, I need to go back up to normal blending mode push my opacity to 100% so that all I see is the texture. Then I'm going to go over to my color picker over here and I'm going to click on the foreground color and I'm going to choose the lightest pink. Believe it or not, this is not white. This is actually a very pale, pale pink over here as you can see. Press OK. Press B for brush. and Make sure I have a nice soft brush over here in my brush selector and um, you can change the size of your brush by using the right bracket key which enlarges the brush, left bracket key 
decreases its size. Okay, so now you say, well, where is the image so that I can remove the texture? We do that by reducing the opacity. And let's go back to the blending mode that we have chosen, which is multiply. And we'll bring it back down to the opacity that we chose, more or less. And now we start to work on removing the texture from the face. Now, the opacity of the brush over here is also important. Right now, I want that at 100% so that I can completely remove that texture from the face. And then a little bit from her hand like that. And also, I don't generally remove the texture from off of all of the skin because, again, you do not want this photo being totally separated from the image. You want it to be part of that image. So I do want to keep some texture on her arm and on her hand. What I'm going to do now, and this is very important, is go up to the opacity of the brush, and I'm going to cut it in half to about 50%, and then gently go over that arm just to reveal a little bit, maybe on top of her hand, and then a little bit over here, so we get a gradual um, progression of texturing. And there we go. And that's about it. And I'm going to seal the whole transformation. I'm going to collapse my layers, flatten, and now I have my image. Now what I might do with this image is I might crop it in a little bit, so I'm going to take my rectangular marquee tool and I'm just going to harden like that, go up to image, crop, hit command D for deselect, and there you have it. That's our final image. The second image I'd like to show you is this one over here. And I use the texture Key West to create the image. It was actually very easy to create, very simple edit. Um, the first thing I want to do is show you the original photo. This is straight out of camera. And it was um, shot in um, woods around my home. Um, ISO was 320, shutter speed 1 800th of a second, the f-stop was 2.8. And actually to go from this to this was a fairly simple process. So let's minimize that. I also want to say that I did do a simple edit on this before applying the texture and I'll show you what that looks like. Here is the edited photo. And all I really did was sharpen the photo and apply some skin smoothing, which actually lightened the skin as well. And that's about it. I left it darker um, than I normally would. If I were to present this to a client, I would have brightened up the photo. But I'm relying on my texture to do that, so I left it as it is. So let's begin. And we drag and drop our texture across the photo, like we did in the first example. Grab those bounding boxes. Doesn't have to be perfect. Like so. There we go. Press return or enter to seal in the transformation. And now we can actually eliminate this and let's look at our layers palette. This time I'm going to use the overlay blending mode. Now, I know I said that normally I use um, multiplier hard light with these particular textures, but in this case, I like the effect that I got with overlay. If I had used hard light, um, I would have obliterated the beautiful contrast between her hair and her skin. Even though I love what it does to the texture, um, I just don't get the contrast I want in the face. If I had used multiply, it would have turned it too dark and actually dulled the photo. So we're going to use overlay and um, that's at about 54 percent. And I do want to remove the texture off of her face and arms this time. So let's move in a little bit and we're going to turn this back to the normal blend mode. Opacity up to 100 percent. Go to our color picker over here, 
choose a color roughly in the area of the face and go back down to overlay 54% there okay B for brush and we are just going to brush that texture away from her face like that and you can go over the hair too if you so desire because this will actually increase the contrast and make the hair look smoother there we go now the reason why I leave the texture on the rest of the photo is because I want this photo to belong to the rest of this art piece. I do not want the photo um, sticking out like a cutout from, from the whole image. So I do want that texture to be seen across the flowers and the dress. But in this particular case, I am removing it from the skin, like so. Okay. And there we have it, up to layers, large visible. The only other thing I might do to this photo is I might lighten it slightly. So I'll press Command J, and duplicate my background layer, go up to the blending modes and go down to screen, which lightens the whole photo. And there you have it, layer, merge visible. The image that most of you saw on Facebook was cropped and I just go to my rectangular marquee tool, draw a crop like this, go up to image crop, press command D for deselect, and there is our final image. The third image I'd like to show you is this one of this bride. And I created this using the storefront texture very unusual texture. Um, you might find some nice surprises when you take images, gentle images such as those of brides or of flowers and apply bolder and stronger textures to them. You get some very um, surprising results. This image is um, a little more difficult to do so I'm going to show you how I executed that. Um, we start with the original photo, which is this. And as you can see, there's a lot of work to be done here. I have to remove extraneous things from the background. Um, I did um, a basic edit on that photo, and here she is here. So as you can see, I removed these strings. Um, I sharpened the photo. I smoothed out the skin to a great uh, degree. And um, actually, most of the photo was smoothed out. I did sharpen certain areas, such as the hands, the rows, the eyes, lips, nose, earrings, and some of the details on the dress. Um, I also warmed up this photo um, using an adjustment layer. So this I consider ready to be textured. So let's minimize this and this. And again, we start off in the same way by dragging and dropping our texture across the photo like so. Command T to get those bounding boxes. Like that. And you can lower the opacity to see where your, where your image is. Like so. Press return or enter to seal in that transformation. And now we can minimize the texture. Let's look at the blending modes. So I'm going to blend this with hard light, like so. And I really like what hard light does to this texture. So I'm going to use this blending mode. However, I'm not getting enough of a contrast on the face and the hair and I want the eye to be drawn to the face, so I need a lot more contrast. 
So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to first merge my layers and I'm going to leave, as you can see, I've left the texture this time on the skin. In this particular image I'm choosing to leave the texture on the skin. But I want to punch up this photo a lot more over here. So I'm going to duplicate my layer, like so. And I'm going to create a multiply blending mode, which first of all darkens the background tremendously. I'll bring it down a little bit. But I want to remove that dark shadowing from off of her face. So I'm going to create a layer mask um, just by pressing the this little mask button here. Go to my color picker and make sure I have black selected. Press B for brush. And I'm going to remove that adjustment from off of her face and body. I want to keep I want to keep um, the background dark but I want to take it off of her like this. Now again, if you go over by accident, for example like this, go to your color picker, choose white, and paint your adjustment back in, just like so. Okay, so that looks good, and I've left the hair kind of dark because I like that. Okay. Layers, merge visible. The next thing I might do is go up to layers, new adjustment layer, and down to gradient map and create a gradient map of this image. And the first thing you see is you get a sort of a, a negative of this image. So you go to your adjustment um, palette here and choose the third one from the left and it it turns it into a black and white, which actually is a very nice way to create a black and white. But we are going to now blend this layer that the gradient map has created. And we're going to use the overlay blend mode. And right away we get a much more striking image. Bring down the opacity a little bit. I'll let you see. That's the image before we added the gradient layer. This is with the gradient layer. And I, I really, really like that a lot. So. The only other thing now that I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen this photo. Go to layer, merge visible. Um, I'm going to do Command J and duplicate my background layer. Go up to Filter, down to Other, and over to High Pass, and get the High Pass Sharpening dialog box. Press OK and merge that layer or blend it using the overlay blending mode and I'm going to get a very nice sharp image which I really like. Okay, there we go. Now, you can leave this on top of the texture um, which really brings out the texture itself or you can choose to uh, put a mask on this and just apply the sharpening to the eyes, nose, lips, earrings, and other important areas, the rose, some of the details on the dress. Um, I think I'm going to choose to leave the sharpening on the whole image in general. And I would say this image is just about done. Let's layer, merge visible. The only other thing I might do is kind of use my healing tool and get out some of the little imperfections that I might find um, by sharpening the texture. And there we have our image. And that completes the tutorial on using the Bohemian Canvas collection textures.